politicians out there, but because there is a small group here that has loved God enough to stand with Israel. Remember what Hashem says to Abraham? He's standing there in a human body. I mean, come on, wake up. Hashem himself, Yahweh, in a human body, standing with Abraham, and he said, if there be ten righteous there, I'll spare the city. He says to Abraham also, he said, whoever blesses you will be blessed, whoever curses you will be cursed. I know there's some critics out there who said, well, that was just to Abraham. You know what? You need to search the Torah a little deeper. There's about five places in there where God says that, and one of them applies to Israel. Hmm. We can get on that another day. Okay, so we go on down. Where would I leave off here? And he said, please let me glean. And uh, she said, please let me glean and gather. Okay, we got there, there where she's gleaning. Then Boaz said to Ruth, you will listen, my daughter, uh, uh, will you not? Free will. Hmm. Seems like that's what we hear in the word of God. Not just, not just the Christian Bible too, by the way. It is, it is Torah of a free willing heart. Bring forth your gifts. I, so he asked her kindly, will you not? Will you not listen? Do not go glean in another field, nor go from here, but stay close to my young women. Stay close to the word of God. Don't be gleaning in all these fields. All these different doctrinal theologies. And I don't want to get out. I'm not here to hurt anyone's feelings. Stick with the word of God. And stay with the word of God. Let your eyes be on the field which they reap and go after them. Have I not commanded the young men not to touch you? Now that in itself is interesting. If you ever notice... The Jewish people are not against. They're not against. The Jewish people are not against those Jews who, when they come, are not there with, an, with some prejudicial idea, hoping that they're going to convert a Jew automatically like this, you know. Oh, we're going to convert the Jews. No. When they come there with a free heart, willingly, want to help bring Jews home, they're willing from their pockets to put money out, to, to bring another poor Jew home from some other place that is longing to come home to the homeland. That's why it says, my, he says, they, they, my, the, the young men won't touch you. It's God himself has placed a spirit in the Jewish people to befriend the Christian that has that type of motivation. You don't believe me? Ask Gershon Solomon, good friend of mine. I used to live across the street from Gershon. He'll tell you the same. He loves the Christian people that will stand and support Israel. Support the cause of Israel. Amen. Okay, so anyway, let your eyes, um, let your eyes be on the field which they reap. Okay, we, we just read this here. And the young men, uh, now notice here also, and when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn. That thirst for life. You know, he's a God. Now, this is just a personal opinion here, but I believe that he's also showing you that the Torah, the Tanakh, is not just a book of the past, throw it away. When you're thirsty, if, in other words, if you want to see what the promises of God are laying in here for the future, they're also written in the Torah. They're written in the Tanakh. So don't just cast it aside. You know, the Bible... We was, how many times do people think that the Bible was canonized and, and God closed it with uh, Malachi, Malachi? He didn't close it with Malachi. Who are we to say? I mean, yes, it is true. Moses said, do not add one milah to the law. Don't add one word to it. But does that mean that the words of the apostles of Jesus were wrong? No. If that's the case, then why do we have Yeshayahu? Why do we have Jeremiah? Why do we have uh, Yezekiel? Why do we have uh, Malachi? Why do we have all the other books there? The thing is, is, in other words, don't try to alter the word. And the Christian Bible can support it if you know what it means. If you don't try to take and say, my Jewish brethren, if you don't say, well, they can't get the genealogy of Jesus right. Matthew says it one way, Luke says it another way. You know, I mean, my God, quit straining at the gnat. That's not, you just, you, you know, how many, how many critics do we have on the Torah? Yeah, the Christians agree the Torah is right. Of course they do. You know, because it's, it's the foundational book for them. 
But when it comes to the critics that are, don't agree with the Torah, they kind of found all kind of faults. But we can explain it. Yes, we can. But the thing is, find then someone that can explain the, the Christian Bible to you to where it makes sense and dovetails with the Torah. Because it don't contradict it. Hmm. All right, brothers, let's take a look at this. Let's be serious. Let's, let's, you know, ask Hashem to be serious with you and look at this and give you favor with him. So she fell on her face, bowed down to the ground and said to him, why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner? I mean, just like the little woman that come to Jesus, she was a Gentile and Jesus said, it's not meat for me to give the children's bread to dogs. Call her people dogs. She said, truth, Lord, but the dogs eat the crumbs under the master's table. You know, he was calling the Gentile race a bunch of unclean animals. But she found favor in his sight. And Jesus even makes a comment. He'd never seen so much faith, not even Israel. It's true. And Boaz answered and said to her, It has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. Christians, you need to take good note of that one right there. Because what Boaz is speaking of is prophesying that since the death of Jesus Christ, it has been watched the kindness that the Christian has either showed to Israel or those that claim Christianity have killed the Jews because of it. And in her case, he speaks of the kindness. Because why? There is a Christian out there that is nothing but shows the kindness and love and outpouring of a genuine spirit of God to the Jewish people. And, and believe me, did Ruth ever look down on, on her mother-in-law because all the evil befell her? No. She didn't look down on her. Not at all. Okay. And how you have left your father and your mother and land in the land of your birth and have come to, to a people whom you did not know before. You're willing to forsake all the other ungodly ways. You become a Christian as the Christians call it. You've been born again. Not born again to another denominational belief. But you're born again of the Spirit of Almighty God. That's what it is. The Lord repay you Repay your work and a full reward be given you by Hashem, by Yah Yahweh, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. My gosh. Now, keep that close in mind because you're going to see something in here in a minute. You're going to see her testimony, Ruth's testimony. Now, earlier, Boaz is prophesying when Moshiach comes, because he says right there, you know, Yahweh Imcha, you know, Yahweh is with you. And now he's kind of alluding to this again when he says right here that, uh, that Jehovah, I'm going to just say it in plain English for the Christian people, that Jehovah repay your work and a full reward be given you by Jehovah, God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. Now, here's what's interesting. Whose wing is she under? The wing is a representation of strength. See? This is where Jesus, this is where it comes in when you're looking at the, uh, Jesus himself as Moshiach. Jesus is the strength. He's the body. He's the wings, so to speak. Okay? Just keep that in mind because we're going to come right back to this in just a few minutes here. Then she said, let me find favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have con uh, comforted me. Wow, it seems like I remember Jesus making this statement here. I will not leave you comfortless. Now, he didn't say, well, let me just read, the, let me just quote the rest. I know it by heart. I will not leave you comfortless, but I will send you. Well, let me see. <laughs> I'm going to real quick while we're thinking of this here. Let me just, let me see if I can find this here. Um. Comfortless. Just bear with me. I'll, I'll cut out the... I will not... Here it is. John 14. Jesus quoting himself. I will not leave you comfortless. 
I will come to you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but yet you see me, because I live, you shall live also. How do you think Eve lived? Because Adam had life, God was able to give her life. Jesus came for redemption, for Gula, to bring back that which was lost. To restore back the Holy Spirit. To put it back, to allow it to come in. Remember when Jesus stood there and he breathed upon him? Let me real quick, though, I don't want to lose this saw here. At that day, I, you shall know that I am in the Father and ye in me and I in you. I in you. He is the Comforter himself. It's his Spirit. Ruach Kadosh is not... The Spirit uh, is not some separate God. Jews don't think the Ruach Kadosh is some separate God. We know that it's Hashem. It's His own Spirit, His own life. But we know that He's able to impart that to us. He's able to impart eternal life into us. That's why He put into Adam, uh, like, He says, uh, you know, Chaim. He put in the life, a plural life of, of the life of Yahweh. Break the word down. That's what you get. Okay, so, but anyway, with, with Jesus, well, let me see if I can find this one other one here real, real, real quick before I breathe um, on them. I, I think, I, well, let's see. I, 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 there's, there's a place in the Christian Bible. It's very interesting because you have to remember, God breathed in the, in the nostrils of Adam and he became a living soul. Okay, with or for his soul was the life of Yahweh. Okay. Jesus, before he um, is, is crucified, breathes on his apostles and says, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And maybe, maybe that's how that is. Let me just see. Receive. I, I can't spell worth a flip. That's where my trouble is. But he says, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Christians, do you not get, do you not get what he's trying to show you? Only Hashem, only Yahweh can do this. It was Yahweh in the beginning that breathed upon Adam and brought forth a, a man filled with the Holy Spirit. And it again will be Yahweh in this day here, or in the, land, in the days when Jesus was here, he breathed upon him and they received the Holy Spirit. It's a deep lesson and, and I'm going so deep into it and it's taken so much time and I just pray you bear with me. And Boaz answered and said to her, it has been fully reported to me. Okay, we, we read this already. Um, she came for refuge. We got that there. I am not like, okay, let's read here. Verse 13, chapter 2. Then she said, let me find favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and I and have spoken kindly to your maidservant, though I am not like one of your maidservants. Mm. Now Boaz said to her at mealtime, come here and eat of the bread and dip your piece of bread in the vinegar. So she sat beside the reapers, and he passed parched grain to her, and she ate and was satisfied and kept some back. There's your communion right there. There's your apostles, you know, partaking of it, fixing to receive eternal life. Uh, when she rose up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and do not reproach her. Do you not see the ministry of, of Jesus right there? Remember Peter, for you Christians, that when the Lord drops down this vision of all the unclean beasts and God says to him, kill and eat, he said, not so, my Lord. Nothing unclean has ever come into my mouth. You notice that? And then the Almighty God says to him, do not call that unclean what I've made clean. Showing that the Gentile would come in. Because you have to remember, uh, Kosher law, to begin with, Hashem gives us kosher law. Why did he give us kosher law? Because he says like this to us. The, mor the, the, the sexual immorality of the Gentiles is such that I, I have to put this law here for you to separate you so that you know, don't eat of the unclean things. In other words, they're just like animals. That's why Jesus says to the woman, you know, it's the race, not the, the fact of a woman, but it was the race, the Gentiles as a race was an unclean race because of their sexual immorality. So Hashem gives us a kosher law because of that. But the thing was, when God shows Peter the vision, Jesus has already died. He paid with his own blood the price for sin. So therefore now the Gentile has a door to come in. And Boaz is speaking of that right here. 
So don't call it unclean. It's been made clean. The Gentiles, through that blood, the sacrifice. And my brethren, you know as well as I do, as long as the Gentile is willing to come in under the law of Moses, we have to accept that. And there's been a blood sacrifice offered for them. It says, when she rose up to glean, Boaz commanded his young man, saying, let her alone glean even, even the sheaves and, and do not reproach her. So the thing was, was, in other words, the Gentiles were going to come in as well and they were also going to evangelize. In other words, leave them alone. Also let the grain from the bundles fall purposely for her. Leave it uh, so that uh, she may glean and do not rebuke her. So, uh, so she gleaned in the field until the evening and uh, beat out what she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. Then she took it up and went into the city, and to her mother-in-law, saw what she had gleaned. So she brought out and gave to her what she had kept back after she had been satisfied. See, she's, she's helping to bring the lost children, the lost tribes of Israel back home. That's part of the Gentile ministry. And even though God has commanded us as Jews to bring home our people, like Michael Frund is doing with IsraelReturns.org, God commands us to do like that, but also he deals with, with the Gentile as well. Let them have part in it. Let them take part in it. That's the four corners. Bringing home the lost tribes of Israel and, of course, uh, the house of Judah as well. So you... You people that claim to be Christians and you're not taking part in that and you're, and you're not at least supportive of it with your own heart and your own ministry, check yourself with the Word of God. Then she took it and went into the city. Okay, we read that there. Okay, verse 19. And her mother-in-law said to her, Where have you gathered today and where did you work? Blessed be the one who took notice of you. So she told her mother-in-law in whom she uh, had worked and said, the man's name with whom I work today is Boaz. Then Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, blessed be he of, of uh, Yahweh, who has not forsaken his kindness to the living and the dead. My God, that's a beautiful one right there. He's not forsaken the living and the dead. You know why he says that? I, bet, I, bet, I, don't, think that, I don't know if there's a Christian alive that knows the reason why he says that. The, the living are the Gentiles that have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost that was poured out on the day of Pentecost until now and have received the Holy Ghost. They're living because they have received eternal life because they accepted the provided sacrifice that was able to bring forth life, the life of Yahweh back upon them in the form of the Holy Spirit. But he didn't forsake the dead either. Naomi considered herself dead, and she was right, because there was still not a life, there was not a spirit of Almighty God living in her. And even in the natural, in that day, the spirit of God had not been poured out that way. That's why the scripture says about those of the, uh, like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all of them, they died believing they would receive a promise, but it was a far off. And until Jesus came and offered up his own life so that the Holy Spirit could be parted from him, that's why his side was pierced. Adam's side was pierced. He was opened up. And from him, God brought forth that life. When Moses struck the rock in the wilderness the first time, not when he said speak to the rock, but the first time, Yahweh told him, go and smite the rock. That rock was split open. You know, check, check out, um, uh, oh gosh, the Caldwells. Uh, the call was Jim and Penny Caldwell. They have a beautiful picture on their website or, or even Ron Wyatt's website. You can see the rock. They found it over in uh, northwest Saudi Arabia. Ron Wyatt was actually the one that discovered it. The Caldwells were kind enough when Ron told them how to get there to get the picture of it and brought it back. And here this rock is, a huge rock that's been split. Hatsua for my Jewish brethren. Hatsua, the same rock. And we know that according to David and the Psalms and, and Yeshayahu as well, that he said that it was that, that Hashem was that rock, Yahweh was that rock. Of course he was the rock. He was on the rock. Or in this case here, he because we know that the, 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 the according to the Torah, that God Hashem is the life-giving waters. And when the rock was smitten, it was able, he had to smite the rock to bring forth that life-giving water, to bring forth the Spirit of Almighty God. 
But that water was a natural water that you would thirst again. When Jesus was at the woman with the woman at the well, what happened? She said, he said, bring me a drink. She said, sir, we don't have custom. You're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. He said, if you knew it was, it was speaking to you, you would ask me for a drink and I'd give you water. You don't have to come here. He didn't say that he was going to go get her some water. He said, I'll give you that water. And when he was on Calvary and that Roman soldier opened up his side, the water and the blood came from his side, the blood showing that it was blood sacrifice, that he was a sacrifice, but the water showed that he was the living waters of life, that it was Yahweh that was inside of that human body that came forth, that brought back redemption to Israel. And, and my brothers, we sit here and we argue over this fault, that fault with the Christian Bible. This is wrong with it and that's wrong with it. Call me. Take the time and call me. You can find my number easily on my website, IsraelReturns.com. You can call me. I'll gladly sit down with you as love as one Jewish brother to another Jewish brother. You're not going to find a mistake. You might think it's that way, but it's not that way. And we have right here in the book of Ruth, hidden all these mysteries. My gosh, praise be to God. Okay. So anyway, as we have here, let's say, I don't know where we're at, verse 22 maybe of chapter 2. And Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, it is good, my daughter, that you go out with, with, his, with, with his young women and that the people do not meet you in any other field. I like that. Stick with the Word of God. You don't, you don't need a bunch of fields. Maybe, maybe we already read this here. Uh, forgive me, I've got to find my place here. So she, so she stayed close by the young women of Boaz and gleaned until the end of the day of the harvest and the wheat harvest, and she dwelt with her mother-in-law. Chapter 3, we're going into chapter 3 now. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, shall I not seek security for you, that it may be well with you? Now Boaz, whose young women you were with, is he not our relative? In fact, now the question is brought up, is he not our relative? In fact, he is uh, winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Therefore, wash yourself among, uh, anoint yourself and put on your best garment and go down to the threshing floor. My God, if I've never, you know, the Christians speak, brothers, you Jewish brothers that don't know this, you know, they speak of this rapture uh, where uh, Mashiach is going to meet with them and he's going to take them in a marriage. This is why they look at Boaz as a type of Jesus and the Christian as a type of Ruth going to get married there. And that is so true. I, 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 it's just obvious here. But see, she also, though, she has to get ready, though. Notice this. For you Christians, she has to get ready. She has to anoint yourself, put on your best garment, and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. Mmm. Wow. There, there's some thoughts there, and I'll hold that to myself right now. I won't let that <laughs> Uh, that's interesting. Uh, you're going to find, though, that the full redemption of Israel, where Daniel speaks about that our sins and iniquities uh, will be, re basically, they're done away with, over in uh, Daniel chapter 9, around verse 26, 27, to make an end of sin, make reconciliation for iniquity, etc. Those right there. I th almost wonder if this is not going to be right at about the same time. And you'll see why in just a moment why I think this. Um, so at the threshing floor, she's to anoint herself, put on her best garment. That's the word of God. Put on that word of God, sisters. The threshing floor, but do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. Okay. Then it shall be when he lies down and you shall notice the place where he lies and you shall go in and uncover his feet and lie down and he will tell you what you should do. And she said to her, all that you, all that you say to me, I will do. So she went down to the threshing floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law instructed her. And I like that. Do you, you know where that is, my brothers? Basically what this is going on. In other words, everything about Mashiach is in the Torah. It's, it's right there. Everything, everything about Mashiach is in the Torah. And what's not in the Torah? is in Tehalim, what's not in Tehalim, is in the Tanakh, and so forth and so on, and the Tanakh right here, everything 
everything is in the Tanakh. So, that's fascinating. I love it. Praise God. So anyway, uh, so uh, it's going to get good now. Watch what he, what he does here. Now, verse uh, uh, 4, I think is what we just read. Place there in Elijah. Okay. Uh, oh, let's read it again. Then it shall be when he lies down and you shall notice the place where he lies. You shall go in, uncover his feet and lie down and he will let you know what you should do. So he's going to let you know what to do. That's revelation, my brother. Love it. And she said to her, all that you say to me, I will do. So she went down into the threshing floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law instructed her. And after Boaz had eaten and drunk and his heart was cheerful, he went to lie down and to the end of the heap of grain. And she came softly, uncovered his feet and lay down. Now it happened at midnight that the man was startled and turned himself and therefore a woman was lying at his feet. And he said, who are you? So the answer, I am Ruth, your maidservant. Take your maidservant under your wing. That's the one I've been waiting on. Whose wing? His wing. Who did he say? What did, what did, what did, what did he say? What did Boaz say to her earlier? Blessed because you've come under the wing of Jehovah. My God. It's telling you that Moshiach, inside of Moshiach, will be Jehovah. Yahweh. Yahweh. Oh, my gosh. Take me under your wing. The woman, uh, mm, the maidservant, under your wing, for you are, are a close relative. Because you remember, remember, what, remember what Boaz said to her earlier? Um, you know, who's, who's, you know, he's talking about Hashem. Uh, yeah, it's right here in verse 12 in chapter 2. He said, uh, uh, Yahweh, repay your work, and a full reward be given you by Yahweh, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. Mm. That's hard. I know that's hard for a lot of people out there that are Christians. It's hard for you to, to see that. Um, you know, because for the Jewish people, we don't believe in multiple gods. And I, and I know there's a lot of Trinitarians that don't believe in multiple gods either. You know, it's just a lot of times the way it's presented. For Jews, it, it, it appears that you believe in multiple gods. But I know I've got a lot of good Trinitarian friends, and I know they don't think like that. They realize that it's one God who has manifested Himself in in more than one way. And in that case, there we can see that it, it was it was Hashem at the burning bush, but He's in a pillar of fire. That's why it says angel, the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord. It's not like there's some other guy there flying around with wings. The angel of the Lord is a representation of the pillar of fire. Elohim in Hebrew. When it says just just for a little little. Uh, uh, Hebrew uh, instruction for you to so understand why Jews find it kind of funny when people say this. When it says, Bereshit Ra Elohim et Hashemayim et Ra'aretz, this is Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now, sometimes the Trinitarians, they take the word Elohim, they say, see there, it's plural. It's plural form of the word God, so therefore we have, you know, there's one God, God Jesus and God the Father and etc. No, no, because in order for it to be multiple gods, then it would have to also have a plural verb. And see, and just to show you though, so you don't get a contradiction in there, because watch what Jesus says. The scripture says in, 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 in the Christian Bible, all things were created by him, and all things that exist and that you can see and that you can't see are by him, by one person. Well, in that, if Jehovah is another god, then where did he, he get left out at then? Because your Bible says that. Now that's correct. Because if you go back and see in Bereshit Bara Elohim, see, Bereshit at the first is literally what that means. Bereshit Bara created at the first Elohim, God, God created in the beginning, et Hashemai Vetraaretz, the heavens and the earth. But it doesn't say Barot. If it had been Jesus and God side by side going along creating it, like there's two different gods right there, then it would have had to have said Bereshit Barot Elohim et Hashemai Vetraaretz. But it doesn't say that. Okay, so this is where the Elohim, the plural part, is the fact that God can be manifest. He can, he can, he can show his his attribute, his different qualities of who he is. In other words, he can be as a pillar of fire, the angel of the Lord, the Eish uh, Sinai, the burning bush. Uh, he could be when he comes down with the other two angels with Abraham. It is Yahweh, Hashem, that speaks, that stays behind with, with, uh, with Abraham. And when he stays behind, there's only one guy there. There's not the other two. So, see, and it was Yahweh that was speaking directly with Abraham, 
now, but he's but now he's in a human body, he's in a flesh. This is what Jesus is. Jesus is Elohim. He is God manifested in a human body. So inside of Jesus is that very spirit of Almighty God. Yahweh is inside of him, bringing forth the life. And the body of Jesus is, is the Son of God in order to be a sacrifice for sin. God offering his own Son, his body, up to be a sacrifice. Uh, I hope that helps out a little bit there. All right, so as we go on here real quick, and after Boaz had eaten and drunk, his heart was cheerful. All right, we already read this here. We read that. Let's go to verse 9, chapter 3. And he said, Who are you? So the, as she answered and said, I am Ruth. Okay, we read that there. We know that she's under the wing now. All right. Then he said, Blessed are you of, of Yahweh, my daughter, for you have shown more kindness at the end than at the beginning, and that you did not go after young men, whether poor or rich. Stay with the word of Almighty God. Okay? That's that. What he is showing her is that she didn't take other gods. She stayed with the word of God. And I love that right there. And now my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you all that you request for all the people of my town know that you are a virtuous woman. I guarantee you one thing. Jewish people know who are genuine Christians. Don't kid yourself. We, we definitely know who real Christians are because we can see that life of God and we may not understand it. And there's not many of them. There's not many. I can tell you that right now. There's not many. Okay, stay this night and in the morning it shall be that if he will, uh, excuse me, let me back up. Now it is true that I am close relative, however, there is a relative closer than I am. Than I, excuse me. Stay this night in the morning, and it shall be that if he will perform the duty of the close relative for you, uh, good, let him do it. But if he does not want to perform the duty for you, then I will perform the duty for you as Yahweh lives, lie down until morning. Rest. There's your rest. There's that Christian rest, the receiving of the Holy Spirit. Rest. See, she's already found favor in the sight of God, so now she can rest, okay? So she lay at his feet until morning, and she arose before one could recognize another. Then he said, do not let it be known that the woman came to the threshing floor. That's that secret catching away of the bride of Christ. That's why the Jews cannot see who Moshiach is until... This covenant is done. And you're going to see it's going to be a simultaneous thing. Not to say that there's not Jewish people that won't recognize. Because believe me, when, it's, when John spoke in Revelation, of he saw this group that no man could number. He didn't recognize them. But he did recognize one thing, that they were made up of every tongue, tribe, and kindred, and nation. The tribes as well. So there are Jews amongst that. But then that other group, the 144,000, he recognizes them because why? They're of each tribe of Israel, the 12 tribes. And don't think there's a mistake in there, brethren, because we'll get into that argument on another day. But for my Jewish brethren, when you look at the 12 tribes he chooses, uh, uh, all you have to do is go back and look what Yahweh says about the tribe of Ephraim and the tribe of uh, Dan and what they did. So another day, another argument. But anyway... So what does he do here? He says, uh, stay this night and in the morning it shall be that if he will perform the duty, uh, the close relative. Okay, all right, now we get, let's go to verse 14. So she lay at his feet until morning. She's resting now. Uh, let's skip down a little bit further. Do not let it be known. Okay, don't let it be known. Also he said, bring the shawl that is on you and hold it. And when, he held, when she held it, he measured six ephahs of barley and lay it on her. Then she went into the city. Mmm, mmm. My God, my God. There's so much right there in that one verse. It'll make your head swim. Um, just to kind of let you know on everything, that six ephahs has an importance there because John in the book of Revelation talks about the seven seals. Six of those seals, that six represents that first six seals right there. And just in like in a, in a little nutshell right there. Because why? In the seventh seal, uh, Jesus... In the seventh seal, the Bible says that uh, there was space for, uh, or, uh, silence in heaven for about the space of a half hour. Um, uh, let's see. And, and also, just for my Jewish brethren, uh, we have that very same 
passage, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's in Zechariah. I'm real quick. I got my computer here in front of me. I'm going to see if I can just real quick find that. Um, uh, but where, where it says, keep all silence, uh, he has uh, holy habitation. Uh, habitation. Maybe I can find it like that just real fast for you. Let me just see. Uh, let's see here. And let's see, Judge. No, that's not it. There, Jeremiah. Maybe it's in Jeremiah. Or his voice in his holy heaven. He shall. No, not there. It's got, oh, it is in Zechariah. Be silent, O all flesh, before the uh, before uh, the Lord or, or Hashem, for He is raised up out of His holy habitation. Okay. Boaz is fixing to show that type of God raising up out of the holy habitation. So let's just keep that in mind here, real quick. See, she's done. Her, Ruth is already finished. She's done. She's found favor in the sight of God. And Boaz being that type of, uh, of Hashem, she says so. She says she's under his wing. And Boaz has already said he came, she came under the wings of Yahweh. Okay, so when she came to her mother-in-law, she said, is that, is that you, my daughter? She doesn't recognize either. either. Um, then she told her all that the man had done for her. And she said this these six ephahs of barley he gave me, for he said to me, do not go empty-handed to your mother-in-law. By the way, that's also showing you stand with the Jewish people. Whether Notice, e even at that point, Naomi doesn't know who her own daughter-in-law is. The Jews don't really recognize that, that Jesus is Mashiach and, and who that Christian really is. They don't really get that part of it. But if you'll stand with the Jews regardless whether they recognize you or not, God will bless you and pour you out a blessing that you cannot contain. You know, Jesus, my wife brought this up to me one time where it says, uh, you know, that uh, Jesus says, in so much you've done to the least of my little ones, you've done it unto me. And she, she brought this to my attention. She said, I don't believe that it's speaking of the Gentiles. I believe he's speaking of Israel. And she may have a very good point in that. So interesting uh, that she caught that as well. Um, so then uh, she said, still, uh, uh, sit still, my daughter, until you know how the matter will turn out, for the man will not rest until he has concluded the matter this day. Now remember, Israel is to be born a nation in one day. And once we see the rapture takes place, this is what we're seeing here. She's resting. She's gone into the, she's gone into the city, the holy city, the new Jerusalem, and she's resting. It's the same thing with Joseph. When Joseph goes to reveal himself to his brethren, he dismisses his bride from around him. And when he dismisses his bride from around him, why? Because he's going to make himself known to his brethren. Mm. Now Boaz went up to the gate, and he sat down there, and behold, the close relative of whom Boaz had spoken, come by. And, and so Boaz said, come aside, friend, sit down here. So he came and he aside and he sat down. And he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, sit down here. So they sat down. Then he said to the close relative, and by the way, the ten, just keep this in mind. It's kind of funny that that's written in there. Because do you realize that because of what Hashem says to Abraham, that there be ten righteous in the city, that God would spare it? To this day, since Israel has become a nation, they never cease day or night to have at least ten righteous men there praying as a witness that God will not destroy Israel again. Anyway, uh, then he said to the close relative Naomi, who has come back from the country of Moab, sold the piece of land which belonged to our brother uh, uh, Elimelech. See? In other words, our forefathers when they sold Jesus out they had sold the land they sold him out and so therefore we went into bondage we went into captivity again we did something wrong my brother we didn't go into we didn't go into exile for no reason I'm there with you my people are there with you so it's not like you're the only one uh, you know but he says I thought to to uh, to inform you saying Buy it back in the presence of the inhabitants of the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, redeem it. But if you will not redeem it, then tell me that I may know. For there is none one but you to, to redeem it. And I am uh, next after you. And he said, I, and, the, and the man says, I'll redeem it. He's going to redeem it. But this is what the clincher is. Then Boaz said, on the day you buy the field from the hand of Naomi, you must also buy it from Ruth the Moabite, the wife of the dead. 
to perpetrate, or excuse me, to perpetuate the name of the dead through his inheritance. Now, our people have come back to the homeland, all right, but that's the one part we didn't want to deal with. We don't want to buy it. We don't want to redeem Ruth along with Naomi. We'll take Naomi back, but we don't want to take Ruth back. We don't want to take the Gentile in. We don't want to accept what she has. And so he says here, now this was the custom in the former times. Oh, wait a minute. Before he says, and the close relative said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I ruin my own inheritance. You redeem it. My right of redemption for yourself, or I cannot redeem it. There's Esau and Jacob all over again. He's, 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 going, he's not going to accept it. Oh my God, it's, it's wonderful here. Now, we'll close here. Now, this is what the custom is in the former times in Israel concerning redeeming and exchanging. To confirm anything, if one man took off his shoe or a sandal and gave it to the other, and this was the, uh, the confirmation in Israel. Therefore, to the close relative said to Boaz, buy it for yourself. So he took off his sandal, and Boaz said to the elders and all the people, Boaz said to the, to the elders of the people, you are witnesses, this day I have bought all that is uh, uh, Elimelech, and all that was uh, Kilion's and Mahalon's from the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the widow of Mahalon, I have acquired as my wife and uh, to, to per uh, perpetuate the name of the dead through his inheritance, that the name of the dead may not be cut off from among his brethren and from his position at the gate. You are the witnesses this day. And my brethren, let it be known that Jesus says, I am the door to the sheepfold. I am the gate. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. He has paid the price. It is finished. It is over. The only difference is it's our hour. It's close at hand because Ruth is fixing to get married and our people are fixing to recognize who Mashiach ben David really is. If you're a Jewish brother and you see this and it's starting to tug at your heart now, Maybe you're part of the tribes that are part of the bride of Christ instead. If you're a Christian, or if you're not a Christian, watch this video. I encourage you to recognize the Moshiach, the son of David. His name is Yeshua, Jesus, the Christ. Baruch haba, blessed is the coming of Moshiach ben David, because for Israel, we will be born in a day. And as Brother Gary sends me the email, it won't be because of the revival that's going on. There is going to be a revival, but unfortunately, it's already a rapture. So it's a revival in another dimension. So we kind of, there's, there's, there's where it comes in at. But you know what? Brother Gary, he's right, because in this regard here, what causes the jealousy is that there is a rapture. There is a marriage between Ruth. Now there will be joy I didn't finish it because the video is so long. I'll have to break it up into two parts. God bless you. Baruch Hashem. Blessed be the name. And his name hmm, is Yeshua HaMashiach.